today we're talking about chapter 34. I know we're jumping way ahead. Um, but we're talking about protection, support, and locomotion. That's exciting. What's that? What's locomotion? It's a dance. <laughs> it is a dance. But locomotion is basically movement. Okay, so we're going to talk about protection, support, and locomotion. Today we're going to talk about skin, which is the body's protection. Are we ready to do it? Yes. All right, because I'm ready. This is like one of my favorite sections when we started talk, start talking about the human body. So we're going to do that and get started. Structure and function of the skin. Let's talk about the skin. That's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the skin, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the bones. We're going to bring out Mr. Sherlock Bones from the cabinet, and we're going to start learning the names of the bones in the human body. The skin has four types of tissue. Four tissue types that we find in the body. We can find these four in the skin. Number one, we have epithelial tissue. Epithelial, what is it called? Epithelial, it covers the surface of the body. Okay, so that's the stuff that covers the surface of the body. Number two, we have connective tissue. What does that sound like it does? It connects, it connects right? It sticks, it holds stuff together. This is uh, tough and flexible protein fibers, and it acts like an organic glue. It holds stuff together. We want stuff to be held together because um, if we didn't have that, we'd have some serious problems. So we don't want that. So we have our connective tissue. Then we have muscle tissue, and we have that in the skin also. All right, the muscle tissue in the skin, what it does, it interacts with hairs to respond to stimuli such as cold and fright. What happens with the hair on your skin when you get cold? It stands up, right? What does that? The muscle tissue that we have in the skin. And we're going to talk about that. Which, which comes through little holes. We have different pores, and we're going to talk about those in a little while also. Then the last type of tissue that we have would be nervous tissue. What does that do? It makes you feel nervous. It makes you feel nervous. No, not exactly. Not in the skin. Um, nervous tissue allows us to detect external stimuli such as pain and pressure. Is that a good thing? Do we want to detect that? Yes. All right. If you go, um, you're at home, you turn the hot stove on, and you're... You get distracted, you put your hand on the hot stove, what happens? Oh. Ouch, right? You're screaming, okay? Why are you screaming? Oh, except Darkway. Darkway wouldn't feel the pain because he's Darkway. Um, but you put it on the hot stove, there's a lot, of, a lot of stimulation happening right there, sending signals to the brain. The brain says, ouch. Well, the brain doesn't say ouch, but you say ouch in response to it. And you pull your hand away. If you were not able to detect that stimulus, you would not pull your hand away. You'd come, put your hand on the stove, and it'll start burning. You'd be like, hey, how's the day going? And blah, blah, blah. Next thing you look, you have no hand. <laughs> we don't want that, right? We want to have hands. All right, so the four types of tissue. Number one. Oh, oh come on. The four types of tissue. Number one. Epithelial. Number two. Connective. Connective. Three. And, okay, how about without looking at the screen, number one, two, three, and, okay, without looking at your handouts, <laughs> I, I didn't say you did, I didn't say you did, I'm, I'm just saying, number one, two, three, and, all right, sweet, so you know that for the test and you'll answer those questions when I ask it. All righty, there are two layers to the skin. We have the outer layer, which we call the epidermis, mm -hmm. and we have the inner layer, which we call the dermis. The outer is what? Epidermis. And inner, the dermis. Good. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at these different layers. If I were to look at this figure that we have on the screen, here you see this outside layer, here is the epidermis, and we have this thicker layer that is the dermis, and we're going to talk about the structure of those two and the functions of the different parts. Epidermis. The epidermis has an exterior portion. So we're talking about the outer layer, but even that outer layer has an exterior portion. And this exterior portion is made up of 25 to 30 layers of dead, flattened cells. So when you look at your skin, the layer that you're seeing is a bunch of dead cells. Did anyone, did you guys know, and I know some of you probably know this, but when you're at home and you're sweeping up the dust, what's most of that dust that you're sweeping up? Dead, dead skin cells. Isn't that awesome? That is crazy. 
cool. I think that's awesome. You're sweeping it up and you're like, oh, look at all that skin. I, that's, that's awesome. Most of the dust in your house is actually dead skin cells. That's kind of, well, unless you have like a really dusty house, then you got some other issues. But most of the dust in your house is actually dead skin cells, or a lot of the dust in your house is actually from dead skin cells. Say that again? Well, if it's an abandoned home, you got all kind of other junk and all that good stuff. But, um, but a lot of the dust that you see generally in a building, in a house, um, has to do with some dead skin cells. This contains the um, keratin, which basically protects the skin, and it gives elasticity. If I take my skin, I can pull on it, and it's kind of elastic, and that's because of the keratin that we find in the epidermis, the exterior portion of the epidermis. So the lotion, well, the dead, uh, the lotion is to keep it moisturized. We have some things, and we're going to talk about those oil glands that help to keep it moisturized. But if you don't have enough moisture, um, you're lo using lotion to make up for some of that. Okay. All right, uh, and especially if you're in a place like Michigan, which gets cold. Um, your skin can dry out a lot, and you want to use lotion for that. Um, then we have the interior portion, and the interior portion is made up of living cells that replace the dead cells that we have on the surface. All right, Because remember, we're shedding cells all the time. Um, we have living cells beneath that that replaces the dead cells, and some contain melanin. Melanin is a pigment that colors the skin, and it also protects cells from damage. So who has more melanin, you or I? You. I do. Ha, ha, ha. That means I'm more protected from the sun, huh? Amen. Amen. Oh, I know. So um, if you look at different uh, colors of skin, some have more, and the more you have, the darker you're going to be. And the darker you are, the more melanin you have, and actually that does give some protection from the sun. All right, uh, this process of the living cells beneath replacing the um, dead cells at the surface, that entire process takes 28 days. So every 28 days, you actually have new skin. That is pretty cool. I think that's pretty awesome. Every 28 days is as if you get new clothes. Well, not really, but new skin. Good enough, right? Does it get rid of scars? We're going to talk about scars in a little while and what that does. But um, you can have scars that last for a very long time or forever, right? Like this big one I have in the middle of my forehead. Do you see that scar? Yeah, yeah, right Did I tell you guys what that scar is from? No. Uh, this is a very embarrassing story. I'll say it and then I'll edit it out so that it doesn't go on the internet. No, that's not the car accident. Um, but this, this was, um, do you see it right here? Do I need to turn on the light for you guys to see my scar? <laughs> it's a very dumb story. Um, and if you tell anyone outside of this class, I'll say that you're lying. Um, but you see it in the middle there? Oh, yeah. I can't see it. Can this way, did you run around the corner and ride something? Yeah. I ran around the corner. I was going to get my jacket in St. Martin. It was cold, quote unquote. Um, so I'm running around the corner. I run in the house, and I ran around the corner, and I ran into the corner of a wall. like. Like right here. I don't know. I kind of slipped a little bit. And then I just kind of. And then I was like underground. And then there was blood everywhere. I had to go to the hospital and get stitches and all that good stuff. Wasn't a fun night. Was not a fun night at all. But um, how old was I? I was probably. I don't remember. I think I was about 12. Or something of that sort. I don't remember. I'm using the excuse that I slipped, but I probably didn't slip. Anyhow, let's continue. So that process takes 28 days, and we replace the dead cells that we have on the surface. Now let's talk about the dermis, because the dermis has a lot of stuff. You can see here that the dermis is thicker than the epidermis. Um, and the thickness is varied in different parts of the body. Some, pla some places you'll notice that your skin is thicker than others. For example, if I look at the skin here on my hand, it's not really that thick. But if I look at the skin on the bottom of my feet, it's going to be thicker. Why would I want that? You use your feet more, you're walking, and it's taking all the pressure from your body and all that good stuff. So you want that to be thicker. So some places it's going to be thicker than others. 
Um, and this is where we contain, where, where it, co it contains blood vessels, nerves, nerve endings, hair follicles, sweat glands, oil glands. These are a number of the things that you find in the dermis layer. Now we're going to talk about those things in some detail. Let's talk first about the oil glands. And this is what we, were, we uh, mentioned a little earlier. Oil glands, basically what this do, it secretes a certain type of oil that prevents the hair from drying out. It keeps the skin soft and it's, it inhibits bacterial growth. So those are the functions of the oil gland. It secretes that oil and you can see that here. It doesn't say oil gland, but where it says the sebaceous gland, that is, those are the oil glands. And that prevents hair from drying out, keeps the skin soft, and you can help that out, of course, with using lotion, like we mentioned. And it also inhibits bacteria growth. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about, hair follicles. The hair follicles are navo, navo, what's navo? I don't know. Me neither. Hair follicles are the narrow cavities out of which the hair grows. And you can see that here, you see the hair shaft, and we have the follicle where the hair grows out of. So those are the hair follicles. Then we have sweat glands. What do those do? Sweat. They produce sweat, right? Um, and this is a fact that you probably didn't know. The average human produces 900 milliliters of sweat, releases 900 milliliters of sweat. Is that a lot of sweat? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's find out how much sweat it is. Here I have a container, and I'm going to put 900 milliliters of water in here. Are you ready for that? Yeah. 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 You guys want to see that? Okay, I'm going to put 900 milliliters. I'm going to start it. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> What's that? Bottom of my desk? All right, I have 900 milliliters of water. The average human loses this amount of sweat daily. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So Every, good. it's disgusting? What are you talking about? That's awesome. That's awesome. Every day. That's a lot of sweat. That's a lot of sweat? I think so too. Now, this is also going to vary from person to person. If you're more active, are you going to release more or less sweat? More. more, right? If you're less active, you're going to release less. So, it, in theory, in actuality, actually, um, you could probably release significantly more sweat than this on a daily basis. This is just saying the average, all right? If you guys want to pass this around to see how much sweat that really is. Oh, yeah. Just imagine all of that is sweat. Isn't that exciting? Oh, that's exciting. Just don't spill the sweat. Um, Pretend that's sweat. It's like, no, I don't want to touch it. It's not sweat. It's only water. It'll be okay. All right, let's continue. So that's the sweat glands. Now we're going to talk about the function of the skin. Why in the world do we have skin? Why do we care to have skin? Number one, it regulates the internal... Ew, are you drinking the sweat? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It regulates internal body temperature. How does it do that? How does the skin regulate internal body temperature? It Exactly, you're sweating. When you sweat, um, it, it, the sweat is released in response to elevated temperature. And when that happens, the sweat evaporates. And of course, it takes heat for the sweat to evaporate. Where does it get the heat from? It gets it from your skin. Um, and that cools the body. Okay, so that's the number one function. Number one function, it regulates temperature. Second function. It functions as a sense organ, and we spoke about this before. We said that it have, has nervous tissue, it has nerve endings, and, and basically when someone touches you or you touch something that's hot or cold, it sends signals to where? Nerve cells. Okay, the nerve cells seg send signals where? Your brain. your brain, and your brain says, whoa, that's hot, let me get away from it. Or it says, whoa, that's cold, or whoa, 
Someone just hit me. What did you say? Whoa, she's hot. <laughs> All right, so those are the functions. Let me get rid of our sweat here. Uh, there we go. All right, so that's how much sweat you release on a daily basis, on average. Awesome. I think it's awesome. Okay, so we have the se it functions as a sense organ. It the nerve cells receive stimuli from outside and relays that information on the inside. Okay, so number one function is it regulates what? Temperature. Temperature. Number two, it does what? It's a sense organ, okay? Regulating temperature, and it functions as a sense organ. Uh, next function, pro produces vitamins. What vitamins does the skin produce? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. When does it produce it? Yeah. Exposed to sunlight, all right? So we have vitamin D when exposed to light. Um, and what vitamin D does is it helps the body, helps the blood to absorb calcium. And calcium has a number of functions in the human body, um, some of which we're going to talk about later in this chapter and even in other chapters. Uh, next function, it protects the underlying tissue. Okay, all the tissues, it protects those underlying tissues. So it helps regulate temperature. It functions as a sense organ. It produces vitamins, vitamin D in particular and it protects the underlying tissue. Now, let's say you are running outside and you fall, you hit your knee on some pebbles or whatever the case might be, or you drag it against the, the sidewalk and um, you get a cut. What's the first thing that happens? All right, so let's talk about the repair stages that happen in response to an injury. You, 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 you fall, you hit your knee or something, or, and you get a cut. You scream, all right? According to Austin, that's the first thing that happens. You scream. Next thing that happens is what? Okay, so someone said you bleed. Um, so the first thing that happens is blood flows to the wound until a clot forms. Do we want a clot to form? Yes. Why? Why? To stop bleeding. To stop the bleeding. You don't want to continue <laughs> bleeding profusely and then die, right? Because we don't like dying. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't want that to happen, so we don't want to die. Um, next thing that happens is you form a scab, and that scab is basically a barrier between the bacteria and underlying tissues. Um, once the scab develops, then the new skin cells repair the wound from beneath. Uh, you have signals that go to those cells that say, hey, we need you to divide so we can get new skin cells, and you replace that damaged tissue with the newly formed skin cells.